Hi, I'm Michael Whitehouse, and this is the Daily Michael Video Blog for Sunday, September 20th, 2009. Most people like to uh, start their day with a nice morning cup of coffee, but I've stopped drinking coffee because it makes me jittery lately. So I've decided to start my day with a nice morning cup of stupid. I shouldn't say stupid. I should not criticize my commenters. A nice morning cup of poorly informed. So I got a comment on the Obama, Obama sign post I made the other day from from what's his name here from SK Family One, which says, "I love the sign. So your opinion is not stupid, but another person's is. Wow, how close-minded." Um, I'll answer this piece at a time. So yes, my opinion is not stupid because I can back it up with facts. His opinion is stupid because you cannot impeach someone for being a socialist. You can impeach someone for high crimes and misdemeanors. High crimes would be, for example, uh, hiding documents that the law requires you to reveal. Um, high crimes would be torturing people against the Geneva Convention and against United States laws. Those would be high crimes. Just for example, not that anyone's done those things, but if they were to, those would be impeachable. Um, then he goes on to say, you managed to elect a man that you know nothing about, but yet criticize a man that kept us safe or kept you safe for eight years. God help us with Obama. Um, George W. Bush did not keep us safe for eight years. George W. Bush invaded Afghanistan, which knocked Al Qaeda onto the back foot, which was a good thing. He then invaded Iraq, Iraq, excuse me, for no good reason, creating thousands of new recruits for Al Qaeda and costing thousands of American lives and not really doing anything to make us safer. We're also kept safe by the wonderful work of many CIA, FBI, and other law enforcement agents who are not George W. Bush. I suspect that he did a great deal to get in their way. In fact, I know that he directly intervened in some ways to make their jobs harder because there are certain things he wanted to do that weren't actually the right thing to do. So, um, SK Family doesn't stop there. He goes on to leave a second post because... Sometimes you have to pause and think about it before more thoughts can come out. So they says, I thought you Dems liked your taxes. Who said I'm a Dem? I'm certainly not. I'm currently a registered Republican because I voted for Ron Paul. We'll get back to that later. VP said, it's patriotic. That's a flag. We'll get back to that later, too. So I think they should raise it to 9%. Don't you agree? Bigger government is the answer. Obama is your king, right? There are a number of all capital words there, so I say that. Um, so, no, Obama's not my king. He's my president, just like George W. Bush was my president. And when Bush was my president, I certainly hoped for the best. I hoped that he would do well. He unfortunately did not, but I didn't work against him, that's for sure. Obama's not my president. I think he will do well, because he's not an idiot, and he went to school and can read long words that have five or six letters in them. He's a smart guy. Bush was not a smart guy, unfortunately, but he was still my president. Obama is also my president. I did not elect a man I know nothing about. In fact, Obama has proven to be exactly what I expected him to be, which is good, because I expected good things from him. Um, Deval Patrick, on the other hand, did not prove to be what I expected him to be, because he turned out to be, um, well, he had a lot of good ideas, just very poor at execution. Obama's much better in execution than Patrick was. And so I'm pretty happy with Obama. Obama promised to insure everyone. No one believed he could do it. But it looks like, unless some Americans who love their personal power and ideology more than they love America try to stop him, uh, it looks like Obama will go ahead and make this happen. So, about my registration. I am currently a registered Republican, as I said. This is not because I love the Republican Party and hate America, as most Republicans seem to. Instead, I liked Ron Paul's ideals. Ron Paul had a lot of ideas about smaller government, more personal responsibility. These seemed good. I got on some email lists. All these email lists are now controlled by teabaggers and right-wing nutjobs. That's unfortunate. I've tried to get off them. It hasn't worked very well. But it uh, does mean I get access to all kinds of interesting emails. Really interesting emails. Um, but no, I'm not a dem, and I don't believe in taxes for the sake of taxes. I do believe in taxes for the sake of keeping the roads paved, the hospitals staffed, the police on the streets, and the teachers teaching. Although I have my opinions about schools, but that's something else. 
I think the teachers are doing the best they can. However, what this does bring me to is something else interesting happened yesterday, which was an email I got from one of these lists that used to be a Ron Paul list, is now a whack job teabagger list, saying that I should send a letter to my representatives in the, uh, in the Massachusetts legislature telling them to oppose the change um, to the succession rules for senator. As you may know, Ted Kennedy died, and now there's nobody in the Senate. Now, in most states, that means that the governor would appoint the new senator. Unfortunately, they changed the rules on that when Romney was, was governor, and it looked like Kerry might become president. And then Romney would get to appoint a Republican senator. So they changed the rules. This was dumb. They changed the rules so it had to be a special election. It makes us one of the few states that does that. Ted Kennedy asked just before he died that it be changed back. Now, I think the Ted Kennedy's dying wish should have a little bit of weight. He was a pretty cool guy. Not the perfect senator, but a pretty good senator. However, these people were saying that uh, for various reasons, including the sovereignty of the Massachusetts Commonwealth Con Constitution and the separation of powers in the U.S. Constitution, they shouldn't do that. How those tie in, I'm not sure. Fortunately, this entire email was sent as a to-list with hundreds of email addresses in the clear. So I was able to reply to these hundreds of people in the clear, which means I now have hundreds of email addresses of teabaggers and Ron Paul supporters I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them, but if anyone would like to send a message out to hundreds of Ron Paul supporters in Massachusetts, let me know. I'll be happy to send you the email address. Email address is. It's a long list. So, hopefully SK Family 1, this answers some of your questions, because you do have an excellent point. Unfortunately, it happens to be on the top of your head. Um, before I go, you may notice that there is an American flag behind me. That is because I love America more than I love politics. Politics are a means to make America great. Now, that does not mean I love invading, Af invading Iraq. That does not mean I love torture. It does not mean I love many things America has done. It means I love the ideals of America. That's freedom, equality, the chance to get ahead, opportunity, free market system. Many of these things are hard to find in America, but the ideal still remains, and that's what the flag stands for. So next time you go off talking about how much you love America, Think about if you're actually supporting those ideals, or if you're infringing upon those ideals. I'm Michael Whitehouse, and that'll do.